Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. There seems to be a very quiet, unspoken agreement between a lot of parties that cars are bad and that people shouldn't really be allowed to have them. After all, you don't really need a car when you're kettled into your 15-minute ghetto, only allowed out to do your job or to go shopping at certain times and providing you've got the appropriate passes and paperwork. It seems to be a totalitarian state on its way. And this is exemplified typically by all these 20 mile an hour zones that are being introduced without consultation when nobody wants them. It's damaging to the environment, which is worse. They keep saying this is good for the environment. And yet it quite clearly is anything but. It's expensive. It costs you more fuel. It burns more fuel. It's all kettling all these cars in one area, all the chokes and all the smokes all together. And for what? It slows down deliveries. It makes animal uh, health far, far worse. It damages the economy. And yet these people sit there virtuous, huffing their own farts, drinking their own urine and thinking how wonderful they are and how much better they are than us. Let's take a look at this, see how bad it is and see why some people in politics just want to abandon the cars altogether. Here goes. So some politicians just want to get car rid of cars altogether and blanket 20 mile an hour zones are just the latest example. Our roads have been increasingly turned over to bus lanes and pedestrianised zones and quite frankly you'd be lucky to actually reach 20 miles an hour in some of our towns and cities. Now I will say that uh, they say all this is always oh, all good for the environment and all that. When you're running a car in anything other than the highest available gear, you're running a car inefficiently. Number two, running a car consistently at 20 miles an hour is very bad for the engine. It increases the amount of wear and tear, which makes the engine even then even more inefficient. Also, more expensive to repair. Uh, also, most cars, the, the speedometers are actually not very good when you get down to that low level speed. They're not accurate, below much about 30 miles an hour. Uh, fourthly, of course, you're busy spending so much time looking down at your mileometer, your speedometer rather, that you're not looking in front of you. It'll increase accidents, people getting hit and things like that. Add all these things together and you can see why it is an absolutely stupid, terrible, damaging idea dreamt up in the wet dreams or at least the fevered dreams of pricks, wankers and tossers that call themselves politicians. They don't put this on their manifesto, and if they did, nobody would vote for it. Imagine a world where they can only bring in things that are on the manifesto, so you know exactly what you're getting before you vote for them. And they wouldn't put this there, would they? And yet it is being undemocratically imposed on people, and it isn't doing anyone any good. Let's have a look deep into this, because it is just a terrible, terrible idea. You have to feel sorry for the people of Wales. I don't. They voted for it. They voted the Labour people in. You get what you vote for. Now, vote them out next time and see if someone will change their mind and get rid of them. And that will send a message. But anyway, you have to feel sorry for the people of Wales where traffic is being reduced to a crawl by what feels like a blanket 20 miles an hour zone across huge swathes of the country. But it's being introduced across Scotland and England too by stealth. Now, the thing about this is, if you are driving sheep, say, down to, uh, you know, wherever you're taking the sheep to be uh, disposed of, um, animal welfare is a very serious issue. And there's certain rules that you have to follow. Uh, but if all of a sudden that journey is taking two, three hours longer, not only is it costing a lot more money for truckers and things in terms of the fuel they're using, but the cost to animal welfare is horrendous. But of course, these people imposing these 20 mile an hour bans and things, they don't think of that because they're very, very stupid people who don't look to the consequences of their actions. Anyway, self-important politicians in more and more towns are quietly imposing similar restrictions. Did anyone ask them to do it? Was anyone consulted? It seems to me that certain politicians, both locally and nationally, are determined to get rid of the motor car altogether from towns and cities. How the hell do you get about? How the hell do you go and deliver things? How do you do anything? Of course the car is important. It's absolutely necessary. How are these mothers going to drop their children off if they have to go by bus? 
it isn't going to happen. And the irony, of course, is that generally the cars are cleaner than the buses. We see this in in um, in Glasgow, where the dirtiest air quality in the entire city is Glasgow bus station. Um, anyway, they've uh, they've turned over roads to bus lanes and cycle lanes and pedestrianised zones so that all the cars are funnelled into traffic jams, causing even more pollution than they otherwise would. Often you'll be lucky to actually reach 20 miles an hour, at which speed you're being overtaken by cyclists with absolutely no intention of following any rules of the road. What you do there is just open your door as they go past on the inside. Well, you should be overtaking on the outside, mate. Sorry, didn't see you there. Clunk as they pick themselves up. Um, then, if you're travelling into a city or out one uh, out, out late one night, uh, when the public transport options are hopeless, there are happily very few cyclists around and not much traffic either. But you're still forced to drive at a snail's pace, which makes no sense at all. Now, this is the whole point. They want to limit your movement. They want to slow you down. They want to drive you out of your cars. And the whole reason is they don't like people being able to move. People moving is against the whole new world order because if people can move, people can organise. And when people organise, they rise up in rebellion and overturn their powerful overlords. We've seen this time and time again. Certainly in the last thousand years of British history, many, many times the people have rebelled. We've hanged kings, we've killed kings. We'll certainly do that to a few politicians, don't you think? So that is why they're doing it. That and the fact they want to kettle us into our little ghettos so that we'll do as we're told. Well, it ain't going to wash, is it? And we need to start asking these politicians at the next election time, do you have plans to get rid of the 20 mile an hour zone? And if they can't answer or don't say yes immediately, you know they're not going to. And so don't vote for them. Vote for independence. If a vote, if a, if a man in your independent in, in your local ward say stands up and says, "If elected, I will get rid of the 20 mile an hour zone," elect him. Just do it, even if it's only for one term, because what you're doing is you're sending a message that we, the people, will not be screwed with. We will not be controlled. We will not be kettled into ghettos at the whim of the elite. And we've got to send that message now, because if we don't stand on our feet, the next generation won't be allowed to. I'll come up. It's happening more and more. Little freedoms chipped away, little things taken from us, done so slowly, so small, so tenderly that you barely notice. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you're in your ghetto and you need your little passport to get out of it to go to your job. And you're only allowed to go shopping between four and six on a Friday because that's your assigned time. And it is total and utter control. Not for the elites, of course, just for the just for the normies, just for the plebs. The elites will be sitting around in their, you know, jets, eating roast beef, drinking champagne, eating caviar. We will be reduced to burgers made from insects because it's good for the environment. We've got to stop, we've got to resist it. These f***ers have got to go. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and keep the fight going. Bye.